panel the discussion an objective and impartial view of the issues of interest to you nation beat is on now welcome to nation beat and uh, on this episode we are looking at innovation and creativity because we are now celebrating the 2024 innovation and creativity week i am your moderator kentilia louis and i have a very interesting panel with me today um, i know we're going to have a very lively discussion and so we will start off with our panelists closest to me we have miss volney and uh, miss volney is the sustainable development and environment officer with the department of sustainable development she is the lead officer for sustainable consumption and production for small island development states developmental agenda hope i said that correctly yes okay and she'll be here especially to lead us and make us understand a little more about the sdgs we'll come back to what that means we have next to her of course one of our icons our creative industries icons dr adrian Oje. he's a caribbean laureate and uh, he is known to be a man of many hats we know him for carnival we know him as a producer a designer an actor a, a writer he's also an economist and he has quite a bit of experience not just in st lucian but throughout the region so again thank you for being here and uh, last but not least we have miss nora Jean-Pierre noel and she's an entrepreneur and the co-founder of Invictus Inc., which is a climate change adaptation company. It's a mouthful. <laughs> Love it. Want to know more about what that means. And they specialize in smart ocean technologies. Yes. So again, thank you for being here. And we will be discussing, as we said, the SDGs, especially SDG 9 and uh, the role of creativity, innovation and the creative industries. How can we help to ensure that St. Lucia is able to reach their goals where that particular SDG is concerned? So let's start off. When we say SDGs, what do we mean by that? And I'm looking at our sustainable officer here. Um, what is an SDG? Okay, so it's the Sustainable Development Goals. It's coming out of a global agenda. It's called Agenda 2030, Transforming Our World for Sustainable Development. So the Sustainable Development Goals are targeting sustainable development. There are 17 Sustainable Development wow. Goals. Mm -hmm. It looks at all areas such as people, planet, prosperity, peace, and importantly, partnership. And we are looking at SDG 9, that is industry, innovation, and infrastructure. However, all the SDGs are linked. And in achieving or promoting SDG 9, we can target other SDGs as well. OK, all right. Hmm. So they are all interconnected, as you said. Yes. So when you say that, it makes me think how, as a society, if you have 17, how do you break them apart? Are there specific areas that um, one SDG will you know, focus on? So for example, we're talking about creative industries and culture. Um, do you think that all the SDGs are connected to it or maybe spe some specific ones? Some of them are connected to it. For the SDG 9, we look at areas such as um, sustainable infrastructure, look to, looking to retrofit our um, infrastructure so that it's more environmentally conscious. We have better technologies so that it can assist us in becoming more sustainable in our infrastructure. In the innovation part of it, of course, looks at the greening, the creativity, and ensuring that our culture is included in our strategic planning so that we have more innovative ways of creating more sustainable infrastructure and also industries that are more environmentally friendly and it's, it can reach all persons. So therefore, with industry, we look at SDG 8, which is economic growth um, and decent jobs. 
So when we bring creative industries and culture and innovation in all of this, we're ensuring that we have longevity and ensure that there are quality jobs for our people and to ensure that our environment is not degraded in the process of creating these quality jobs. And then, of course, in creating quality jobs, we now ensure that our socioeconomic um, position is better. So we're looking at SDG 1 and 2, where we're looking at zero hunger and also no poverty. And in creativity and innovation, all of this ensures that we help persons come out of extreme poverty. Because it lo SDG 1 looks at reducing, eliminating poverty, but it's extreme poverty. And furthermore, it will also assist with climate action, SDG 13, uh -huh. sustainable consumption and production, that's SDG 12. So all of them are connected there to It's connected in some in way all to ways. everything. Now, I heard you mention that the creative industries and culture will help with prosperity and longevity. Mm -hmm. Dr. Oje, what, what are your thoughts on this? That she's saying that for us to achieve our SDGs, we assuming then it means that creative industries and culture has a core role to play. Have you, I mean, you're a man of quite a bit of experience, both in terms of, um, as we said, not just economics, but um, governance, as well as the creative industries. Do you agree with what she has said? Do you think that this currently exists? I think that SDGs, Special Development Goals, have to be contextualized. Um, the business of development is maybe 70 years old. It's a post-World War II subject. Um, and the Bretton Woods organizations like the IMF and the World Bank, which were formed after the um, World War II, um, basically funded a lot of really destructive and ill-conceived projects which ruined economies, which ruined en environments, um, and caused a lot of uh, disequilibrium in the world, in the world economy and in domestic economies as well. And so there was a need, many, many de decades later, there is a need which was finally recognized that unbridled development, unbridled capitalism, unbridled um, innovation even, without a sort of social and environmental conscience is not getting us anywhere. And so the vast inequalities in the world today have actually been funded by development agencies, in, in part, who were well-intentioned but did not recognize that they were actually contributing to greater inequity in the globe. So the plight of the developing world has not improved substantially despite millions and millions of dollars poured into um, Sub-Saharan Africa or, or East Asia or the Caribbean for that matter. And so you, you look at, you know, 50 years later, you look at the, the, the economic and social impact of major projects, including um, um, heavy infrastructural ones like dams, for example, which have been disaster in many, many cases to the, you know, the hinterland and the downstream and so forth. So what these international organizations have done is to come together and finally recognize that you can't measure everything in dollars and cents. You can't measure everything in even increased employment. You've got to measure things really in qualitative terms. And this is where the SDGs come out of that sort of new development thinking that you've got to have a holistic approach. And you've got to have, therefore, holistic markers or indices or objectives which say that it is not enough to give a man a job. You must give a man a job that is going to be there um, when he needs it, or a woman for that matter, that you can't have child labor pr pr producing Gucci shoes because it's cheap and it sells well and it makes millions of dollars, but for whom? And it's the same thing that we have to think about in our economy. When we spend a dollar, what is the what is the long-term impact of that? Is that contributing to a better society? Is that contributing to a better environment, a more sustainable way of life? And the big question is, for whom? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if, if, if the, 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 the money spent previously, the resources dispensed with all of this very expensive institutional infrastructure is not producing a better quality of life for the little lady down on the beach in Ancillary, then what's the point? Right. And, and this is where we have come to about 75 years later after pouring a lot of money into developing countries and not seeing the, the, the kind of significant increase. 
that, that we should be seeing in quality of life right. um, and quality of existence, not just the usual markers of income and employment. And, you know, is your access to health care better? Are you living a, are you living a, safer, a safer life? Um, is the child less likely to be battered? Right. You know, because you know, of all those traumas and what it produces. Okay, so, so that's a noble thing, but making it real for the vast majority of the population is where we have not yet begun to invest. This is still being discussed and debated at the level of ministries. Um, you know, look at us in our fine clothes, in our air-conditioned comfort, um, mm -hmm. with our government jobs. We come here. We, we, we're not at risk. Right. We're not at risk. But the people who are at risk, what is development doing for them? How is their life being changed? And for that to happen, you really need cohesive approaches, inclusion. You need community-based solutions. You need consultation. And I'm not so sure that we are seriously ready to do this. So my fear is that we're going to have another elevated debate for maybe 5, 10, 15 years while this is sexy. And then what? Is the life of the lady down on the beach in Ansari going to have changed substantially? Or that of her children, right. who will by then be finished secondary school and in the same rat race of, of looking for a job and being paid low wages and maybe never breaking out of the cycle of poverty. That's where we need to focus our attention. So you are saying that, as you said, let's stop being so top heavy. Let's look at the lady on the yeah. beach. Let's yeah. go down to yes. the um, man, woman who's been affected. Well, let's go where the need is. Where the need is. Where the real need is. Yes. So, so uh, mm -hmm. it, it, is, it is no longer of any use to us to, to keep um, mentioning visitor arrivals. Oh, visitor arrivals went up by 25%. So yes. what the hell? Yes. Did the income of someone mm -hmm. change substantially yeah. that they can now have better access to health care? Mm -hmm. Or they can be less hungry? Mm -hmm. Or they can, they can be more um, assured of their living conditions, yes. for example? So you spoke about, for example, the woman in Ancillary. Yes. And um, I just want to come to you, Miss, because we talked the about... The lady from Library. Yes. <laughs> there you go. Because... Again, so when we talk about um, adaptation mm -hmm. and we look at climate change, especially in a country like ours, mm -hmm. which is affecting, as you said, yes. the man on the streets, mm -hmm. yes? What, um, in your experience, um, as Mr. Oje said, 75 years we've been talking, have you seen in the last few years, have you seen any improvement, changes? What are the trends happening here in St. Lucia? Um, well, for me, I think I have heard an increase in lip service. Um, I think the SDGs are tw uh, meant to, to be achieved by 2030. We're in 2024. Mm -hmm. We have six years to go. Yes. And we are nowhere near achieving the 17 SDGs. Um, we talk about innovation. We talk about sustainability. We talk about um, creating employment for, and I will not say the lady from Ancillary because I'm from yes. Labry, and yes. so we're talking about ladies. So the lady from Labry, who is uh, um, attached to the fishing industry. A lot of times we don't think of ladies or women being involved in the fishing industry, but they are. Okay. We, we, we are seeing an increasing number of fisher women. Mm -hmm. um, we are seeing an increasing number of wives or girlfriends or partners of fishermen who are taking more of an interest, uh, more interest in mm -hmm. uh, the, the fishing industry. They clean the fish, they prepare it for sale, you know. Sometimes when the fishermen come, the fish has already been sold because the women have already said, you know, he's coming back. Right, you know, yes. it's, it's not the days when I was growing up when you, the fishermen come in, mm -hmm. That's when you know what fish is, uh, you know, on board and how much, and mm -hmm. you sell it then. Now the fishermen can call right, and yes. say, you are we, when do I do when tour, you know, and then they come and they knock on my door. Right. Does mommy need, because my mom is, you know, so the, the villagers know, they know that the customers, yeah. does mommy need any fish? I have um, Dorado coming in, I have tuna. Lobster. 
well, right. you know, the lobster season is right. cold. Right. When, when it's in but, season. Yeah. 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 But they do. Yeah, yes. That's an economic exactly. difference to the family that day. Exactly. Right. If you yes. have lobster in lobster season, right. and mm -hmm. you have three or four hotels waiting for lobster, or, right. or prime restaurants waiting for lobster, it makes a difference to the family cash flow today. It Agreed? makes a difference. However, yeah. my thing is, uh, we are... In as much as I think St. Lucia has been seeing an, a decline in the population growth, people like me didn't have kids, so <laughs> you can see that there's a decline in, in a, the population growth. You can see the schools are less populated than they were before. Um, you find that there is a greater demand on the resources that we have, but we're not using them, the resources that we have, sustainably. And what, what, what do I mean by that? Yes, Again, please. I'm from Labry, and I'm coming from a fishing village. And uh, we are working on a project, my company that is, working on a project that will elevate the fishing industry and the, fi the, the experience of the fisher folk. We have a thing now, I, when I was growing up, I didn't know about it, but now we have this fish called Pinky. When the fishermen come in, they say, what do you have? Oh, Pinky Mweni. What is Pinky? Pinky is a juvenile tuna. Now, I wish I had a picture to show because I, I, I took a picture a few years ago, a couple of years ago with my niece, she was about five at the time, holding a tuna in her hand. She's five years old, she's holding a tuna, and most of us think of tuna as this big fish, mm -hmm. but she was holding it in her hand. It's called a pinky. It's called a juvenile tuna, right. and she's holding that, and this is what we're selling. Mm -hmm. And we're in an era where we're talking about sustainability. How can we sustain, uh, we sustain the fishing industry? How can we protect our food source when we're catching juvenile yes, tuna? Fish, yes. tuna. Mm -hmm. By choice? By choice. By choice. By choice. Because we can say, okay, I'm going to throw that tuna back mm -hmm. and allow it to grow to be at least 60 pounds, 100 pounds, and right. we know tuna can grow to be hundreds mm -hmm. of pounds. But we catch that because... Again, climate change and a number of things. That might, we do not understand the migratory pattern of fish. We do not know where they're going, where, why they're going, where they're going, where to get them. Mm? When we think about um, things like fads, we have a fad. Mm -hmm. We place it today, and by tomorrow it's gone because maybe there was a system or whatever. We didn't measure the depth of the waters where we deploy in the fad. The fad disappears. The fishermen do not wait, know where to get the fish. So sometimes... Mm -hmm. um, this is what they catch, this is what they get, and we have a choice. It's always a choice. We can say, we're going to look for the fish, the, 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 the mature fish, fish yeah. or we're going to for, um, to meet the need now and we want to get out of the water, we'll just catch the pinky, bring it in, and the people will buy it. So question to you, and um, I want you to think about that, because the SDG we are looking at, we talk about industry, and when we talk about industry, we always talk about we want more so maybe this might be a result of persons making sure you know we have more variety more fish more you know that's that not variety out there that's not variety um, so think about that what can we do now to ensure as you said the fishermen know okay this is going to affect them in the long term how do we bring that information out to them because i'm sure it's known to some extent um is this where the creative industries come in is it means that the ministry has some work to do in that area um we're going to take a short break and when we come back we will discuss this further so the fisher folk in saint lucia are facing many negative effects of climate change la vie pêche est difficile parce que pour ça les plus fond on ça nous pas acheter plus fuel Pour faire journée les lames, nous pouvons dépenser plus la gasoline. En raison ça, la vie peut être un péché difficile. Parti Waila, c'est un bail qui a affecté nous à la vie. Il a affecté vivre nous, il a affecté canaux nous et il a affecté machine. Aussi, il a affecté placement péché. À si on cherche, c'est pour ça est difficile pour pêcher ça à si oui. Quand on a appris la meilleure et puis pour adopter le changement du climat. Climate change is happening. Are you prepared? Changement climat qu'a fait. Est-ce que vous préparé? And welcome back to our discussion. And we were 
speaking just before we went to break about how can we ensure that there's sustainability? We're talking about the fishing industry. And I know we're looking at SDG 9, and a major part of it is infrastructure. So when we talk about longevity, is it, um, I'm, I'm asking, is it that we have not put in the correct infrastructure to ensure, as you said, beaten not just a fishing industry, but in other industries that there's a lack of understanding that um, whatever we do may have an effect, maybe not now, but 20 years down the road. What do you think may be the, um, the reasoning behind what um, our dear panelist has um, brought out for us? It may not mean that we don't have the correct infrastructure. We may need to be more creative and be more modern in that infrastructure that we're putting in so that we don't lose the, the fish. Well, previously we mentioned fish, but it could be anything else. Yes. We don't lose what our natural environment is giving us. We need to ensure that when we think about um, extracting from our um, environment, our natural environment, we think about what's going to happen in the future. So there, this is where the circular economy also comes in. We don't, we don't want to continue in a linear approach where we extract, we use, and destroy. We want to ensure that we think from the start, what is going to happen after I have taken this item yeah. from the environment? How is it going to come back in this full circle so that our future generation uses it up? Mm -hmm. And you talked about being creative, and I have to go to that. And we talk about being creative and some of the things that are going on. Is it that it's part of our culture to think of the now and not think of the future? Is it that in terms of how um, maybe that's one of the areas too, we might have to um, make sure there's some level of innovation or new narratives being told, Dr. Oje? I like where you're going with that. Um, for sure, what, what the planet is telling us is we can't keep doing things the same way. Yes. The whole planet. I flew in from St. Vincent this morning. There is, there is seaweed from the north coast of St. Vincent all the way down to the south coast of St. Lucia. Wow. Mm. Um, and you can see it coming. It's almost like a, like a coastline. You can see it coming. That's global warming. That's not us, but we're going to have to live with the consequences. Mm -hmm. yes. So in the same way I said earlier that we've spent all of these millions of dollars on development and we've not improved. And in some cases, we have worsened the livelihoods of the people who were supposed to be the target of the development. So the first thing we have to do, I think, is up here. Mm -hmm. We've got mm -hmm. to, and it brings us to the question of innovation. Innovation is change by the introduction of new ideas. Right. So new ideas come from the mind. So unless we, we are prepared to change our thinking, which is, which is a question of really a value system, and I want to come back to your question on, on, of, of our culture. It's a value system, and what the SDGs are trying to do is to, is to implant a new value system on the, on the development conversation, on the modalities of development funding particularly, on the way governments decide their national budgets and their long-term public sector investment programs. So do not just think of building a, a, a hundred foot bridge. Think about the lives on both sides of those bridges and in the water and downstream and upstream and how you're really affecting the entire macrocosm into which you are putting this expenditure. On the question of our culture, I, I don't think that it is a cultural problem um, of not wishing to change because as poor black people, we have had to innovate all our lives to survive even. I mean, how does, uh, how does the lady on the beach get her five children through school mm -hmm. or through a day or through a term or through a year? She has to innovate. She has to understand and, and figure out how she's going to stretch that dollar. Um, and sometimes they don't stretch. So I don't think that there is a resistance to innovation um, as, in, as in finding new ways to do things. I think we're extremely innovative. In fact, I find we are subversive in our ability to get around and underneath and behind and through um, a lot of government red tape, for example. We, we, we can make rap. We know how to make rap. We know how to get into the Fed. We know how to scam the ticket. We know how to get around the COVID regulations. We're good at that. Right. All right? The question is, are we changing our national thinking about what development is supposed to achieve. We're constantly running behind a big, fancy, sexy um, infrastructural project because it has money in it. 
for us and our friends. Let's call a spade a spade. Going down now into the village and asking Ma whoever. Pisha. Uh, <laughs> Pisha. Ma, Ma Pisha. Pisha. That's Pisha. just a lady that just didn't even just right. came to my mind. Ma'am, <laughs> what's your problem? How do we help you? What are the things that are preventing you from going forward, from growing, from feeding your children, from sustaining your job, from not being molested, from sleeping at night? You know, what are, we don't want to have those conversations at a level that is going to create meaningful change. And that's the beginning of our problem. The, everything is, 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 is top focused and everything changes every five years. The focus changes every five years according to what turns whoever on. It does not have to do with a long-term view of where we should be going as a society. I'm talking about that tomorrow night at UWE mm -hmm. on the morn. What are our own values as a, as a society, as a nation, as a developing country? What are our values? And we have become this valueless society, and you can disagree with me if you want. We've become a valueless society because of the constant flip-flopping of policy, of personalities, of, of programs, of projects so that the St. Lucian people, I think, are now adrift, and more adrift than they were, say, 20 years ago, when we thought we were, okay, a, a, a rural economy transitioning to urban, we were an agricultural economy transitioning to services, uh, we were a, a, a you know, three-part, uh, tripartite economy based on services, tourism, agriculture. There was a certain predictability about, about life and decision-making, and you could, kind of imagine, okay, you know, these are the components of a strategic plan or whatever. That, that we, don't, we have very little of that now. We have a lot of talking heads who um, put out divergent things mm -hmm. and the cohesion that the, that the society should be perceiving, ah, okay, that's connected to that by this strategy, by this direction, by this path. I don't think we're perceiving that as a nation anymore. So our ability to wrap our heads around a particular strategy or objective or program or project, I think, is, is largely diminished. But I don't think we lack the, 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 the willingness or the, or the capacity. We just lack the culture of it. thinking mm -hmm. critically Pre about critically. our circumstances and bringing those fresh ideas to play. Miss I Noel, I see you <laughs> waiting to respond and I'm going to come across to you. Yes. I, I want, I want to, to, to build upon what Adrian has just been saying and, and go back to, to my opening salvo when I said that I think we pay a lot of lip service mm -hmm. to issues. Um, for instance, we talk a lot about food security. I was very surprised when I met with some farmers who told me that uh, providing water to farms is not a priority. No, it's not. Ooh. It's You're not right. a priority. In fact, so, Wasco does not produce any water of any farm agricultural slash environmental um, nature. It is not their mandate to, pro to pro am I correct? You are correct. To provide agricultural type irrigation type water to anybody. Now, mm -hmm. we are living in a society, in an era, where climate change is a household term. Yes. Our waters are becoming increasingly brackish. Mm -hmm. It means, therefore, that farmers no longer have the luxury of tapping into river water to mm -hmm. irrigate their farms because the water is becoming brackish. What do I mean by brackish water? The salt level, the salinity of the river water is ah. higher. So you find there is a higher deposit of salt in our river water, which is supposed to be fresh water. Mm -hmm. So can you imagine, as a farmer, uh, a let's say tomatoes, you, you, you're cultivating tomatoes, and you're using that brackish water to irrigate your, your plot, your, your, your farm, we're going to have no tomatoes, mm -hmm. we're going to have none of those sensitive vegetables which depend on fresh water for irrigation. Yet, it has not become a policy for us to ensure that our farmers have proper irrigation, that they have proper water for irrigation. However, we do have within our country a product that can assist with that. We are surrounded by water. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's salted water, it is the ocean, but we can desalinate water. Now, the environment, environmentalists out there are going to say, oh, but the brine, and it, it's going to be more detrimental to the ecosystem. But we have an award-winning 
product in St. Lucia that can deal with the management of the brine, right? That it does not affect the ecosystem on land or the marine ecosystem. And here goes the, the lip service. That product, the Life Cube, which is a flagship product of my company, was awarded the Prime Minister's Award for Innovation. But none of the administrations, neither SLP, UWP, PLP, any of the P's, have seen fit mm -hmm. to use that technology, that innovation, within the agriculture sector mm -hmm. to ensure that food security is mm -hmm. on our priority list. So you see where the yes, lip service, yes, yes. we yeah. have the innovation, but yeah. we're not making use of it. We acknowledge the innovation, but oh, yes, let yes. us go somewhere else where we can get money yeah. and do you know, yeah. whatever it is that we want to do with it. So, and Noel, just, yes. just to make the point, Candelia, <laughs> so the drawing of water from rivers for agricultural purposes is seen as a competitive activity to the um, um, processing of water for domestic and commercial and industrial ah, use. Okay. So we need to, we need to Change bear that. that. Kind of In that fact, yes. if you look at the tariff, and correct me if I'm mm -hmm. wrong, if you look at the tariff, there is, there is domestic, there is commercial, mm -hmm. there is industrial mm -hmm. consumers of water. Mm -hmm. I do not believe that there's an agricultural no, category. You are okay. correct. No. So that is reflected in our very thinking that agriculture does not need water. Agriculture will draw water from, natural, from the natural environment. Mm -hmm. But still behind or underneath that thinking is the concept that this is a, competi a competitive activity which actually deprives the utility of sufficient levels of water to, to fulfill its primary mandate, mm -hmm. which is getting water to domestic commercial industry. So, so, let just, so, so it's a mix match of yes. objectives. Ms. Bonley, we come yes. to you. We'll come, we'll, we'll, we'll come to you. But, hey, but jump in if you must. Is, <laughs> it's it's, it's a competitive environment. Here is, here is okay. the thing. So we're talking about creativity. I have had farmers come to me and ask me, my husband, myself, through our company, how can we build a dam mm. so that they can <laughs> harvest water? Because, and that question usually comes around during droughts. How can we create a dam? And then um, we're going to have, we're going to have a small one of your, you have prepared one of your uh, uh, system for us where we can extract the, the salt from the water because the water is brackish, and but we're going to create a dam. And we're, go we're going to use that to irrigate our, our, our farms. And it's a conundrum because we are saying, plant more of what we eat and eat what we plant. How can we, when we are not being given the resources that will allow us, farmers that is, to do, and we have to say, no, that's illegal. You can't, you can't create, block the, you can't just block so the flow of water. We are, we are so hearing that there's an innovation happening, mm, there's a creativity happening, mm, but somewhere there's a disconnect. Uh -huh. So There's a chokehold. There's a creativity yes, available. Available, yes. So, Ms. Volney. But yeah. it's frustrated. I know you're on the other side. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So, <laughs> your comments on this? Uh, just to add, the SDGs, especially SDG 9, is very people-centered and all its linked SDGs are people-centered. So without including people, as my colleagues have said, there is no way we'll be able to achieve sustainable development. We have to use what we have available to us, our innovative persons, the technology we have available to us, so that we can try to push the country forward. But also we need to ensure we add those cultural ideas, all this cultural and um, creativity into our strategies, our plans, because it will get lost. If we don't start mainstreaming it into our planning process, it will get lost along the way. So are you saying currently that does not exist in our current strategy? It does strategy? exist. We have in our medium term development strategy, it has been included in a lot of our development planning. We do need to implement these ideas and include our people, include our creative One, persons, our two, cultural persons. Three. I'm watching you though, right? On, yeah, pa on, on paper. paper. <laughs> on paper. Yes. That is and why I'm saying we now need to so implement. That no, the implementation no, is, are we saying the implementation the is the issue? Putting it 
excuse me, even yes. the business of putting it on paper should be a collaborative effort. Yeah, definitely, you, exactly. you definitely cannot, but it you is cannot, collaborative. You cannot no, include not. me in private and then send to inform me, oh, by the way, I want you to participate in that. Mm. I may not want to be that. I, I may <laughs> no, not even think that what you... I may not even think that what you are doing is valid or is or is um, relevant mm -hmm. because you haven't asked me about my life. You haven't asked, you haven't come down in the village and asked me about my life. You sit down in your ministry and you decide let's have the creative industries included in this. And you write a paper, you just now, and you write a paper <laughs> and you put words in a document which stays on a shelf and largely collects dust. And, and then we come that. here. No, we, but we, all the processes and then we come are here. consulting. It's they are okay. not. They are not. That all is, our persons. No, they Ladies are not. Ladies and gentlemen, they have to. Ladies have to. and gentlemen, yes. yes. So, inclusive. yes, as you were saying. Yes. So, from what you were saying, Dr. Oje, you were saying that we are not included. Again, going back to what you said about being top heavy. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming that's your I think point. That was your word. But <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I'll, I'll, but I'll, from I'll, the I'll, top I'll, coming down, yes. I'll ascribe to it. You'll ascribe to it. Okay, yes. It's not even top, it's not even top bottom. It's not even top bottom. It is, I have a, a, a phrase I published not so long ago. It says, you cannot consult in public and decide in private. In private, agreed. Okay. <laughs> and then you will say, oh, but we spoke to the community. Mm. Yes, but you, when you are finished consulting in public, yes. you can go into caucus and put some, you must come back to the public for its endorsement, for its buy-in. Mm -hmm. If you want real participation, you cannot hand down a, a, a decision to an entire community. You can say, come let us talk. You go back to the ministry, you draft something, and you bring it back to the community and say, is this what we agreed? Did we get it right? Mm -hmm. Are you in agreement? Do you buy in? Will you participate? The I presumption understand. that you can prescribe for people and then they will participate willingly means that you think you got it right. And you so, probably didn't but get it's it right. But a process. You mm -hmm. have to continue now. After uh, you have no, developed. you have to continue. We are there <laughs> but, but, waiting. So let's just say you want to develop. You <laughs> have to come. Again, again. To people to start yeah. the they process. Should. Okay, ladies they and should. gentlemen, let's just right. give uh, Ms. Um, Wally an opportunity Why? <laughs> to <laughs> just answer. As you said, let's just make sure what you're saying, uh, Dr. Oje, is really <laughs> what exists. During the development process, all our strategies and planning development, we do consult. And then once we've done the consulting, we do come, you know, in during the implementation process, mm -hmm. we have to come down to the people. We have it to. It is always As important. in we should. It must be done. But is it being it done? It is so being done. So, so there may no be well. instances yes. that done? if you miss I wish this was a call in program. Is, yes. is it being done? It so is <laughs> being done. So okay. the thing, so yes, my, thing, well. my thing is this, right? My husband says to me, you go into these things again? Yeah. I have told you I'm not going to this thing. But your inclusion Why are you going to this thing? But I'm a very stubborn person. Yes. I will go, <laughs> but he won't go because he's like, I'm tired. Yeah. Because here is what we think we see as the consultation process. <laughs> and I hate to be they against us, but this is what we see as the consultation process. Mm -hmm. um, Invictus would like you to be a part of this. We're having this forum. Mm -hmm. Come, we want to hear your views. No, we want window dressing. So, so we come to hear the views. Yes. And they ask us our opinions, we give their opinions. Can you hear it? The Sorry. crickets? We hear nothing afterwards. And the, the question is, how do you know that you've got it correct if you do not continue the dialogue, if you do not come back to us and say, this is what we heard you say, and this is what we, the, the takeaway from it. Did we get it right? OK, so I, let's, let's put a pin in it right there. Okay. Did we get it right? And how can we get it right to make sure that we have, as we said, the right creativity, the right innovative strategies. So we're going to break right now, and when we come back, we'll continue. So hold those thoughts. <laughs> yes. I want to go through. Get ready to be enchanted at the St. Lucia Jazz and Arts Festival from April 30th to May 12th, 2024. Dance to the beats of TJ. <laughs> in jazz sensations of Samara Joy Guess who I saw today, my and John Patitucci and let the soulful gospel of Donnie McLuggan uplift your spirit. Oh my, my, my. Feel the energy with Marshall Montano. Sway to Barris Hammond's timeless tunes. Baby, 
and jam to Davido's hits. Don't miss Air Supply's classics and Babyface's brilliance. Explore the full lineup and secure your tickets at St. Lucia Jazz and Arts Festival.com today. And welcome back to Nation Beat and in celebration of this year's Innovation and Creativity Week. We're having quite a lovely discussion, <laughs> lively discussion, lovely and lively discussion, <laughs> looking at how do we ensure there is creativity in the implementation of our SDG 9 goal here in St. Lucia. And when we ended up, Miss, um, Miss Noel, you were you asked a very important question. So let's take it from there. Let's get back to it. Yeah. And I'm going to, once you're done, <laughs> let's hear what Ms. Um, Von Lee has to say about that. Yes. So the question is, did we get it right? And, and I'm speaking from the policymakers' point of view. Did they get it right? When they come to us and they ask us for our opinions, and like Adrian rightly said, it's almost as if it's a window dressing. It's we're doing something with an international body mm -hmm. and there are certain markers that we have to meet and so one of the things we must do a vulnerability risk assessment mm -hmm. so we're going to have this forum mm -hmm. and we're going to include and we're going to invite persons mind you a lot of the times it's not open to just the general public mm -hmm. for persons to just come in at will and speak when we go to these um, these sit downs it's usually people speaking at us and not engaging us. And even when they engage us, the thought is mm, they have a project to write and they're getting, they're getting us to write the project for them. Because we do not feel th that whatever we say is going to be taken into consideration and that is going to be implemented. We have a lobster fishery, right? There are times you can get lobsters, you can catch it at will, and there are times you can't. Why can't we have a tuna fishery? Because we know, we know that we are catching juvenile um, um, tuna. We know, we know that. But we're doing nothing about it. And again, again, when you take something from the people, you have to give something else. You have to give an alternative. The resources are there, the innovations are there, but we're not using it, right? So now when you come and tell the people, oh, don't catch the pinky, let them grow into 600 pound tuna. And the answer is, and I'm gonna send my child to school. Mm -hmm. and. You know, in today's world, we have to ask, how am I going to send my grandchildren to school? Because the young people are killing themselves off faster than they can see their children grow. So it's left to the grandparents to do that. At that age, how do I provide for my, for my grandchildren? How does the future generation um, create, um, live? How do they sustain themselves? Mm -hmm. You know, um, but by you not coming back to us and asking, did we get it right? How can we implement it? Then you, it's spinning top in mud. It's so an exercise in futility. So I'm hearing you saying that um, you do not believe they're coming back to mm. you for the feedback. But I'm hearing you say that you are coming to them for the feedback. Well, definitely I can say for the Department of Sustainable Development, checkups are done. We have our projects and we go into the communities, as you said, to develop those projects. And there are checkups done to see how are things going. Some, the project may end and you may not get the same project coordinator going in. So then somebody else will now have to go in and check up. And maybe in the next five years, you come in and the work is not being continued. Maybe we need to move it, away from projects and, and go into facilities. Because a project has a beginning and it has an end. But we, we're talking about sustainability. Exactly. We're talking about sustainable but that is why development. The, how, how, how can it, right. we talk about so sustainable monitoring development the monitoring and have is projects? Important. Okay, so let's, 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 Dr. Have, let's, have let's, let's, let's get yes. your perspective in here. Yes. What, what do you okay. think? I like mm -hmm. to go to fundamentals, right? I like to understand why things are the way they are. Right. And this is, again, a difficult question which we as a nation do not like to mm -hmm. address. Somewhere in the... 90s, we abandoned our fiscal sense, which is to say that we stopped emphasizing the national savings component, public sector savings component of the national budget. That means that we do not go looking for funding with five cents in our pocket. We usually go with nothing in our pocket. 
That does not give us any leverage at the development table when we are having conversations with World Bank or UNESCO right. or whoever is funding our latest fantasy. So what happens is that the values that have become sexy in the international development forum, conversation, etc., are imposed upon us. And it is what the international agencies have decided is sexy for the next 10 years. We, have, we become the little um, pawns. That's not the word I want to use, but I would, <laughs> we're in polite company. Um, we become the pawns who are required and you, you talk about um, evaluation and monitoring and so mm -hmm. forth. They are boxed to be ticked. You want another, you want another million dollars? You will mm -hmm. do yes. these things. So yes, go and have a public consultation. Mm -hmm. Make sure women are included. Mm -hmm. Make sure you tick off vulnerable youth. Mm -hmm. Make sure you tick off a, some modicum of sustainability, something or the other. And, and our, our public sector people, bless their hearts, <laughs> tick off the boxes and think they've done a great job. That's not enough because the thing is outside driven mm -hmm. and we are not consulting and we come back to creativity. Mm -hmm. You think the lady on the beach in Ansario in library does not know how to solve her problem? She does. But there is no space in the conversation for the solution that she wants for herself. Mm -hmm. This is the problem because the money is coming from outside and the whole um, development apparatus of the country is geared to complying with what the development association has decided what the development community thinks is is appropriate at this point in time so i remember a day as a junior economist in the ministry of planning when we used to tell usaid this is our priority based on our public sector investment program and you will either fund it as we want it or you will not we will go somewhere else and we'll go with our five cents and we'll make the best of it at that point we were, we, we were driving our development. We were deciding our priorities. And we were saying, no, 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 no. This, this is important because it fits with that, it fits with that, it fits with that. Because we had our own sustainable development goals, mm -hmm. which had to do with moving our people and our country mm -hmm. and our economy forward. So we had defined sustainability for ourselves. The problem is that we've lost that autonomy. And, 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 and we can debate this because I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Let's put right. that on the table. But this is how I have see, observed it over the last several decades. We have lost our autonomy in terms of deciding what is good for us. And so therefore, the lady on the beach has been excluded from the conversation of what is necessary, what is vital, what is a priority. Because we are answerable to development as, uh, institutions. We are answerable to whoever is p providing the money. And their concern is not us. Their concern is making themselves look good. Their concern is abiding by whatever the sexy parameters are this, this decade. So and we keep adopting, and this is the problem I have with the SDGs, mm -hmm. we keep adopting things from on high, from our betters, from our from our people outside so our well. economy, and we sign off to them. We sign off on them before we even consult and say, okay, is this is this goal good for us? Mm -hmm. Is this uh, and, our and, own sustainable development right. goal? No, and, but and, the SDGs and given don't that have to make it country driven. Ex it's exactly. international, it's very global and large. But right. now it has to come down I national. Get, of we course have I get to that. Break it down. I didn't go to school on Sunday. I get that. <laughs> but the point is that that is a national conversation mm -hmm. which is not a process of of arbitrary decision making. It is actually consulting on a bottom-up approach because the most vulnerable are at the yes, bottom of the economy definitely. and they don't have a voice and they're not at the table. And the process of consultation in St. Lucia is to call to the table the people you like. Mm -hmm. Do not call the extremists to the table mm -hmm. because they will just rock the boat, mm -hmm. which hopefully we're doing today. <laughs> All right? And the thing about so it is we that call the, the opinions the bottom, that we like. Right, yes. The people, people at the bottom, the people, the people that we claim mm -hmm. that we are looking out for Ask any one of them what is an SDG, much less what is SDG 9, mm -hmm. and see the response. They'll but but yeah. the, these SDGs are supposed to be helping them. Yes. But they don't, it's not they, in their yeah, lexicon. They, they don't right. know it. They don't yeah. understand, they don't understand mm -hmm. what it means. It's something you go to hospital for, actually, or the doctor. Well, <laughs> but, 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 you but know what people were it asking has us? to be, it has to be, it has yeah. to redound to the people who these SDGs are supposed so to be so helping. Yes. And so there's a divide. There is a disconnect. There is a disconnect. A disconnect. Right. Yeah. A disconnect. A disconnect. Yeah. If they don't understand it, and there is no buy-in, there's no skin in the game, how can you mm -hmm. sit on high and 
think that you have the answers for them. Mm -hmm. So we seem to have come to a place where we all agree. There's a disconnect, There's as you disconnect. said, between um, what's on the ground and this understanding mm -hmm. of SDGs. So how can we fix that? What can we do to ensure, okay, we want to make sure okay. that we achieve this goal, but as you said, it's people driven. Yes. Okay, so first of all, the process of consultation has to be a genuine one. Mm -hmm. It cannot be a matter of window dressing and it cannot be a matter of um, let's, let's take the opinions that we want. If government understands its role, it's, it, is, it is at least part arbitrator, which is to say that Mary, John, Peter and Sue are going to have conflicting priorities. Mm -hmm. The role of government in such a consultation is to listen to everybody. Exactly and try and arbitrate and do a little of each, you know, and take them on board. Either you find a superior solution that actually delivers more than John, Peter, Mary, and Sue wanted, or you're going to find something a little bit below that. And this is why you've got to go back to the community and say, mm -hmm. did we get it right? That's right. Because okay. it is not an option to, to satisfy three of the, the mm -hmm. needs and then leave one person out. That is 25% of your, of, your, of, your, of your target, of your segment. So, so you have 25% of your target community who are not satisfied by the solution. Do you think they're going to evaporate and melt away and mm -hmm. keep quiet? Mm -hmm. No, they're going to be plunged deeper into despair mm -hmm. by exactly. the inadequate solution that you think is wonderful, but only addresses 75% of the need. And in this little island of ours, 25% is a lot of it's people. A lot of mm -hmm. persons, yes, and it's a lot of people with, with limited access to the solution. So mm -hmm. we Ms. need to come back to creativity. Yes. What do you think about this strategy? She agrees. She agrees. <laughs> <laughs> what, we do have don't. to go down to the communities. It's very important for us to go down to the communities and understand what their plans are. Why you say go are. down, by the way? Go down as in, <laughs> I'm mm. not saying, no, mm. no. Ah. It's just a, a word that I'm using. Ah, but we do but have mm. to careful. do that. Because mm. without getting our communities involved, we cannot go anywhere. And as you said, 25% can be a very large amount. Yeah. That 25% can cause a good bit of um, environment, environmental degradation for us. And we do not want persons to go into more extreme poverty or go into poverty, as you also mentioned. Mm -hmm. We don't want to increase the divide between the rich and the poor in St. Lucia. We want to try and get We get it that you're not an evil yeah. person, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know <laughs> we get it. We get, you're just doing evil things <laughs> because you're asked to. That's okay. But, so, but, but you know, yes. Yes. I know but no, just to say, just <laughs> we, we do yes. have to ensure that there is monitoring for the sustainability of any projects. And defined projects by whom? Sustainability defined by whom? That is the question. By our country, no. our people. Yeah, we good. have okay. to make sure that good. the sustainability is our people. We cannot take the definition from out there because very good. It, we, the, we may want to be like a metropolitan country, but St. Lucia is different. Mm -hmm. We have to adjust it for Amen, us. Sister. It has to be for St. Lucia. <laughs> but in monitoring is important. Yes, Miss Noel. <laughs> now, I've been waiting for the other shoe to drop, and I've been oh. waiting for her mm. to say that we have these consultations, and they are poorly attended. Mm. I've been waiting for her to say that, but because she, they are poorly attended mm. when they do have the window dressing consultation. Because you know why? People are tired. Mm -hmm. I come to these things and I'm not being heard. You hearing me with a view to answering but not to, to understanding. understanding. You, you, you're hearing me just because you want the sound bite but not bec because you're going to do anything about it. Mm -hmm. So people stay away. But how many, how many times have, has any of the um, ministries said, okay, I'm going to look at the local community leaders and I'm going to charge you with mobilizing your community to come and hear the let their voices be heard in a town hall setting not us speaking to them or at them but to hear them to document what they're saying and in right. in a couple of months come back and say to them this is what we heard and then to have that dialogue for them to say no 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 that's not what we said this is what we said mm -hmm. and to have this continuous back and forth until we get it right and when we get it right to put into place structures policies that are going to lead to an end not a project mm -hmm. but play the an long outcome. game an, an outcome, outcome. An that's outcome. the word yeah. an outcome a sustainable outcome. a sustainable yeah. outcome yeah. how are we going to do that? and yeah. 
projects, <laughs> they don't cut it. They're 10 weeks, yeah. a year even, and then what? What is the outcome? Another project. What have we, another, another project. Uh, another project. Yeah. What have we achieved? So, and this is what, for me, I would like to see. I would like to see outcomes. And I would like to see us upscale those outcomes, mm -hmm. you know? Okay, so we, go, we got in at the bottom level. Now we're going to the second level. Duplicate, repli replicate, replicate the success. Yes. Okay. Okay. So we're close enough now. So you've said what you would like to see. Dr. Oje, what would you like to see I as would, we close I off? I would like to see um, this country really collectively, truly collectively decide what are our priorities? What are our problems? What are our priority issues? What are the priority solutions we are going to bring to them? That requires a mindset of critical thinking. That, that, that requires us to be first dissatisfied with our, with our existences. Innovation does not come because everybody's happy. Innovation comes because people look at their circumstances and say, could this be could be better. Right. It could be cleaner, it could be faster, it could be more efficient, it could cost less, it could yield more, it could employ better, it could give us more joy, it could give us more happiness, it could give us more satisfaction, or what we call in economics, more utility. Mm -hmm. It is time for us to stop going to people and say, we got um, $3 million mm -hmm. for, um, for um, fishing boats. Who wants a fishing boat? Uh, somewhere we say a machine. Mm. Oh no, there's no money for that. There's no money for that. Yeah. Or, or I have a machine, but it's missing a part. No, there's no money for parts. There's money for boats. Mm -hmm. Who decided that that was the where priority? Where are we going? Where, where are you know, the fads? Where are we I want going? Funding what, you know? to, I want funding to, 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 to do something that is driven by my daily existence. Chances are there's a mixed match between what's available for funding. We should be deciding what our national priorities are in a mm -hmm. process of national consultation. Using yes. what we have. And then we decide, okay, you know what, for the next, and we can't have everything. Let's be practical. So we've come up with a strategy so, here. So the creative <laughs> we, you have created application here of ideas. As ideas. And what is, I like about this is that we've really innovated here. We can see that everybody has put in their um, perspective. So, Miss. <laughs> Let's just end with you. Um, let's close up with you. What do you think about what has been discussed here? Can you see it being applicable? Because I know from the ministry perspective, we keep coming back to that. Um, yes, it's applicable. I believe that it can be done. We have to change, as he, we have mentioned, our strategies of consultation, of development. We have to come together. And I would like to see coming on a panel one day that my creative persons do not try to attack me. <laughs> <laughs> but I, we are mainly I, trying to show you the I, error of your ways because we yes, love you. But we it want is not to that we, that we don't wish to attack you. We have unity and yeah. ensure that sustainability actually happens and there is the three dimensions coming together and this marrying. What have. So, what are you using the resources using what that we, we have? The innovation that, that you, not you, <laughs> but you as in government, have already acknowledged. Yes. We have the resources, we have, we have the innovation, we have the, we have the technology, we have, we have the people. So let us use yeah. our Ladies. people, yes. re residents in St. Lucia, to, to move forward. solve our, yes. our problems. In what I love about this, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> in the time that we have had, we have shown what is involved when you are being innovative, when you are being creative. <laughs> you have to leave space for everybody's yes. perspective. There will be the argument, everything comes from a place of passion, <laughs> full of yeah. passion here. And at the end of it, we have some wonderful ideas and great strategies coming out of this. So at this point in time, I want to thank each and every one of you You're for welcome. being here and giving your your advice given your perspective and i'm very sure going forward we we're going to see something again. coming <laughs> out of this so again on behalf of um, the department of sustainability as well as the department of innovation and of course all our guests here we just want to say thank you for joining us on nation beat thank you again today <laughs>